Hi, I'm Christina Heidek of PTO Answers, and today I'm going to talk to you all about how to prevent fraud, theft, and embezzlement from your PTO. Listen, the reason I'm talking to you about this today is that too many groups aren't taking this topic serious enough, and they kind of think that it just won't happen to them. But if you just do a very, very quick, quick Google search, you will see that there are so many groups that were just in the same position and they totally were living in la la land and living in denial and thinking that we're all just friends and we're all, everybody's honest and kind of being Pollyannish about it. And they didn't have anything in place to protect them. And as a result, they lost tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, how heartbreaking would that be to know that, first of all, someone that you were friends with would do that. And second of all, to know that all your hard work was just stolen. I mean, that that's just, I can't even imagine. And I don't want anybody to be in that position themselves. So that's why I'm talking to you about it today. My own community has experienced this, not my PTAs, but a community youth sports group. Um, they didn't have the policies and procedures in place, and this guy cozy up, cozied up to them, took advantage, and he did it in a way where because they didn't have anything written down, he wasn't violating the group's procedures so that it was really hard for the police to make a case, and um, he actually was never officially charged with the theft, even though he is suspected of stealing, I think over 30,000, maybe $50,000 from this youth sports group. And what's really a shame is that they don't even know how much money was taken because there was really no oversight over this guy. So the treasurer of this youth sports club had complete autonomy. Nobody was watching. Everybody trusted him. He was an integral member of the community. His wife was a PTA volunteer. His kids were well-liked. Like, I'm telling you, nobody suspected this until it happened. And the only reason I found about found out about it is because after he did the shenanigans with the youth sports club, I guess he they reached an agreement to keep it all very quiet, to save face and whatever. I'm not really sure. But they ended up uh, parting ways. And then word on the street was he was going to take his talents to the high school um, booster, band boosters or athletic boosters. And somebody in the know wanted to know from me who was a good person to talk to, who would be a safe channel to get this information to. Um, all very delicate, whatever. So anyway, that's how it all came out. And let me tell you, I was shocked. And I was like, why didn't you all just go to the police? And they're like, well... We thought about it and blah, 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 blah. So anyway, just know it can totally happen to you. And if you don't have anything in place, it will happen to you sooner or later. So let's get into how you can protect your PTA and PTO in the first place from any of this nonsense from ever happening. Uh, one, you need to have pretty good controls in place. That means you need to have uh, clear expectations not just told the volunteers about what needs to be happening with the money handling, but also written into your bylaws and standing rules. This means that you need to have good financial housekeeping and practices in place, like having several people count money, having designated money counters at it after events and at events, and having a group of individuals count the money as a group and you each like double check each other's work. It's fantastic in my case because I am numbers challenged and I make mistakes frequently. Um, so there's always a little margin of error with me, maybe a dollar or two, not big amounts, but it's so easy when the dollars stick together. Um, so you need to have multiple people counting it. You need to have count sheets where you're writing this down. People are signing off on it. So you're creating a paper trail because with cash, there's no paper trail unless you make it. So you need to take those steps to, like, to go above and beyond to create that paper trail so um, that you, at the end of the year, you have an audit done. And yes, you have to have an audit done every single year without fail. Doesn't matter who your treasurer is, doesn't matter who your president is, doesn't matter if you totally trust them, have it done. And if you are the treasurer and the president and you know you're not an embezzler, great, 
still have the audit done so that way you have proof that you're not a thief and there's no questions, right? Everything's above board. So back to money handling practices for a second. You also need to be depositing the cash right away. And if you can't deposit it right away, put it into the school safe and just lock it up so there's no question. Um, again, there should be some kind of count sheet along with the money so that it can be verified that it hasn't been monkeyed around with, if you know what I mean. The other thing is that you need to really spread around responsibility. So remember how I said what happened with that youth sports club, that one guy had complete autonomy? I think he was actually the president of the organization and the treasurer. So everything, everything was running fine until actually how this was discovered. The, the group couldn't find anyone willing to make t-shirts for them. Like one, one year someone was in charge of getting t-shirts and they couldn't find anybody willing to do it because the club owed money all over town because the guy was embezzling the money, not paying vendors. Yikes, yikes, yikes. If you have separate roles and responsibilities outlined for each of your officers, um, then that will go far to preventing this unless they're acting together. And that's why you kind of really need at least four people in charge of overseeing the financial stuff, kind of at a minimum. Like you don't want too many hands in there, but you want to have several different layers. And I go into uh, the specifics of this more in a blog post that expands on this topic greatly. And you can find that blog post at bit.ly um, slash PTO theft. So it's bit.ly forward slash PTO theft, one word lowercase. Uh, and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video so you can click on over and find that. And there's also a handy dandy checklist in there that'll tell you that'll, um, it covers every single step that I'm going to talk about. And so it just gives you a little checklist so that you know you're you're putting the, um, doing everything you can to prevent this from happening to your group. So make sure you grab that. Like I said, don't assume that everybody's above board. And I'm not talking about going around being snoopy and assuming that people are being thieving or thieves, but just don't assume everything's okay. Like pay attention at the monthly meetings, insist on a treasurer's report, look at the numbers, do they match up? You should have people reviewing the independent people, um, maybe other officers who don't have financial responsibilities. Take a look at the bank reports, or bank statements rather, and make sure that the numbers all match up. The treasurer's report should be listing all the money that came in for the month and all the money that went out for the month. So that should you should be able to track that, should line up with the bank statements. So it's kind of why you have these treasurer's reports, so that you have another, another piece of paper in that paper trail so you can verify everything's above board. This I did not touch, touch on in the blog post, so I want to make sure to give you more information on um, what to do if you actually suspect theft or embezzlement with your group. Uh, you definitely don't need to keep it among yourselves and you don't need to be talking about it with just the parents. One, you need to go to your principal, bring them on up to speed with what's going on. And the next thing you need to do, you need to go to the police. If you try to handle it internally, it'll just turn into a hot mess. So don't even do that. But make sure that you have evidence. So the evidence could be the bank account is suddenly has no money in it and you guys haven't like there's, it's unexplained for why it's so low. Um, another warning sign could be a treasurer who refuses to give access to the bank account information and doesn't produce reports. Like that's weird. Like why wouldn't you do that? One, that's your job. Two, it just looks shady. So if you see that type of shady behavior, go to your principal and then and then approach the police with what you have and just say, hey, look, we're trying to get everything out in the open and get everything. Um, explained and if you have those strong suspicions i'm going to go with you should trust your gut and probably something is happening and you shouldn't feel all that bad just trust your gut on this because sometimes you just know because something if it's just not sitting right if like deposits aren't being made and numbers don't match up then don't be nice about this you're working hard to raise this money and it needs to go to the right person and not to someone who's just skimming from the organization because that's just 
shady AF, man. So anyway, um, I hope this has been really helpful. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. Make sure to head on over to bit.ly slash PTO theft so that you can download your free checklist on how to protect your PTO from this ever happening to you.